Welcome to My Terminal, a channel about computers, productivity, and more. So this video is the first one of my series uh, back to Linux, where I plan to cover my transition back from Mac OS to Linux in a few videos, one part at a time. The videos will contain details about my computing experience so far, my reason for the move, a relatively short review of my next daily driver, and the steps I took for the transition. So as a quick recap, like most of us do, I was introduced to computers and Windows at the same time. That led to the most obvious thing that could happen. I believe Windows and computers to be the same thing. However, after using Windows for over 14 years, I switched to Linux on my primary machine back in mid-2013. It was my Dell Studio 1558, my first laptop computer. I definitely had a dual boot setup with Windows installed on a tiny partition at the far end of the drive to make sure that I'm still able to run those Windows games. And this was an obvious choice for me. Being able to play games on my computer was one of the few things that kept me from switching to Linux. When my first machine died, I replaced it with an entry-level Lenovo and followed pretty much the same setup there as well, uh, a Windows partition at the end of the drive and it had multiple OS's installed. During the next few years, I distro hopped through several Linux distributions across a few flavors and built a decent uh, .files repo on GitHub where I stored most of my configuration and a lot of scripts that I used on a day-to-day basis. In late 2016, on my quest to find a better machine and just run away from those tens of frustrating Linux compatibility issues on my Lenovo, I looked for a better machine and evaluated a few options out there in the market back then. Uh, one of them was Razer Blade, which was pretty new back then. They had a few models. And then there was Dell XPS 13 and 15. These were two of the machines that I was looking at because these were the ones that were known to be able to run Linux uh, better than the other ones. And there were other few options as well that I don't remember at this point. So the price of most of the machines I was considering back then, it was coming out to be around $2,000, which was, to be true, it was more than twice as compared to the most I had ever spent on a computer. And looking at the price and after a lot of convincing from my brother, who had just recently switched to a MacBook himself, I ended up buying a late 2016 MacBook Pro without touch bar. It was the same year they introduced touch bars on MacBook Pros, but I obviously opted for the one that didn't have a touch bar for cost saving reasons. And that's how I stepped into the third major operating system in a totally unplanned way. Now, my years with the MacBook, they were great. Uh, given my hatred towards Apple and my history of Microsoft fanboyship, using a Macintosh as my daily driver was pretty unexpected to the say the least. Who would know that better than my close friends who had numerous debates with me about how Windows is the best OS out there and Microsoft is the best computer company on the planet. Now getting that out of the way, using MacBook for the last four years has, it was indeed a great learning experience. For the first few days, I wrote a lot of code as usual. I, then I do that as every time I get a new computer. So I write a lot of code. I did that back then to be able to accommodate Mac, Mac OS configuration files into my dot files the way I had Linux. And I used macOS almost the same way I used Linux, mostly through the terminal and uh, I tried to be as less dependent on the Apple ecosystem as I could because I knew even though I got lucky that time to be able to switch to a Mac, my next machine would most probably not be a Mac. As my setup evolved and my dot files grew, I always carried at least one virtual machine running Fedora Linux with me to make sure my scripts were still compatible with Linux as I moved forward. and. That I was in touch with Linux in, in short, to at least a certain extent. Fast forward to late 2019, I came across Linux for Everyone, a series about Linux, basically, and it was presented by Jason Evangelo back then. Now we have a lot of presenters. It quickly got me hooked and reignited my interest and passion for Linux once again. I, I even invested in pre-owned Dell Precision T3600 desktop from eBay, a pretty powerful one. 
and started preparing my way back to Linux for whenever that day might be. I, I knew I would not stay in the Mac OS for long. The learning that had slowed down once, it had now accelerated. I got to know System76 a little better. I used to know them before, but this time I got to know them a little better, especially through a few episodes and a lot of mentions by Jason Evangelo on Linux for everyone. I tried Pop OS, which is their own a distribution of Ubuntu with a lot of features and enhancements. I got infatuated with it. And then I remember I almost lost my mind for the first time when I tried Proton on my computer, which allowed me to run Windows games on Steam. The ones that I could not play since a lot of years, since I didn't have a Windows uh, license. And uh, including the ones that I couldn't even play on my MacBook. Now, due to this sudden peak, of interest in Linux and uh, everything going on there, I I started looking back at Linux differently. My dot files that I showed before uh, on GitHub, it, they received a total overhaul. I re rediscovered Linux by learning several new concepts that I have never explored before. I came up with Twiner, one of my uh, open source projects on GitHub, where I gathered a few hopefully useful scripts for the three most popular Linux flavors which are Debian or Ubuntu, um, Red Hat, which also includes Fedora, and Arch Linux, and a lot of variants of Arch. I learned about the existence of cross-distro package management solutions like AppImage. They can be used on all of the flavors out there. Then Snaps and Flatpaks, and then got a little fascinated with them as well. So out of that fascination, I wrote for a get or for a jet, the way you want to call it, as my first Linux package that could help you work with all those package managers through a single command. So you don't have to remember all the different command syntax of all the different package managers. And I wrote them in Rust. I learned a language just for that. And just to be able to do some systems programming and uh, programming on the command line once more. As a bonus, I designed it to be able to work with macOS as well because I had a Mac so I could test it out. Uh, meanwhile, I also switched from Fedora as my favorite distro to Arch and I reconfigured my i3 setup from scratch. So i3 is a tiling window manager, my choice, it, it helps me use my computer with less usage of mouse and more mostly through keyboard shortcuts. I reconfigured that from scratch, systematically revisited every single software choice that I made in my setup. And I just wanted to create a parallel setup to the one that I had on macOS, just in case if I were to move back to Linux. A few uh, months later, Lenovo announced official support for Linux. And then I think we all know how the story went from there. I got really excited and even though I was looking at System76 also, I was leaning more towards Lenovo because they were claim claiming a lot of things and they had a history of really well-built uh, ThinkPads. Now, I had been using macOS since around four years then and moving to something like Linux, it means much more than the operating system. It also changes the hardware on which you run the operating systems. So unless you're okay trying to run Linux on Mac and vice versa, which isn't unusual, but let's talk about the general case here. Like you have to lose the device if you're trying to make the switch. Now looking back at the last four years, the Mac OS brought a lot of good things to my workflow. It, to start with, it just worked. Like there was no spending time finding the right drivers for my wireless card or constantly resetting my audio so that the speakers still work after more than 10 minutes, for example, without a complete reboot or making sure things work after a system update that kind of usual stuff that you have to do with Linux. At least I had to do because I didn't know Linux that well, even though I was using it for a few years. Then I had a pretty close to Linux experience. So even though I was not using Linux, I, I felt very close to Linux. Just that the system was so well designed to work out of the box without the typical caveats that come with Linux. So I could focus more on my productive tasks than just keep fixing my system because it broke because of uh, an update and lastly the trackpad it worked way better than the mouse so it sounds odd at first uh, i've seen most of my friends 
and colleagues use a mouse they can almost not work without a mouse but while i was using my mac i literally never connected a mouse on the device even for the tasks that required an extra position like editing images and videos the thing just worked speaking of all that there were a few bad things as well like i felt that the choices were missing and the biggest one for me was my tiling manager i knew there are ways you can add software like shift it to mac so that you can simulate a tiling manager experience but it's still far from the real thing i i had it installed i never used it and then the world of linux was shifting as well so i couldn't be totally up to date with linux being a mac user a daily mac user Uh, then I also felt like I didn't belong there in the Mac community, partly because I still wanted to have things more customized for my workflow, and I also felt like I didn't deserve the luxuries of the Mac OS platform. I was not a Mac user, even after four years. Uh, lastly, I didn't want to get trapped for long, which is something that every Mac OS user can relate to. Once you use a Mac, you will never want to return to any other operating system. be it the hardware the software or anything that i've mentioned before you just don't want to return to either windows or linux or even unix and i don't need to look beyond my family to look for examples i my brother he stuck with mac since more than 4 years now and then comes the new hardware it is undeniable how well designed the things were on the macintosh platform be it the perfect integration between the hardware and the software that just feels like a single unit or the hardware design that appears to be exactly the way it should be but Now my 2020 Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3 improves the things that I want to be improved. Uh, it's it's like a platform with great scope for future upgrades compared to a computer that doesn't even allow you changing batteries. It has a slightly better keyboard layout for my workflow. So I spend most of my time with an Emacs and it doesn't involve using those two command keys that come on Mac e- on either side of the space bar. Moreover it felt bad to use overuse the only control key on the keyboard the fear that the key would stop working especially given that the keyboards from that generation of macbooks were the ones that introduced the problematic butterfly switches it scared me even more and i also love the placement of the bother some function key that i hardly ever use it's to the left of the control key so all the keys that i use frequently control super and alt they are in line with each other and then i can also use my external keyboards once again the way i used to before it includes my razer or nada chroma that has been connected to my precision desktop since the time i bought it because i didn't prefer to use this one on my mac i i usually don't prefer using uh, regular keyboards on mac because they are not designed with those keys and i can once again play games over steam on my primary computer which was pretty limited on my macbook partly because of the limited titles but then there was the low specs i had the cheapest macbook from 2016 cheapest macbook pro from 2016 and then mac recently lifted support for 32 bit applications which included a lot of games starting the mac os catalina not that gaming is very frequent for me as it used to be a decade back it's still good to have some capability just in case and i get an alternate input method a touch screen after exactly 10 years since i wanted one on my dell studio but couldn't get it due to limited availability back in india now i'm not a big fan of touch screens on work computers emacs user speaking here but with my carpal tunnel syndrome i think the convenience of an alternate touch input would be handy for some quick tasks besides if i'm not getting a trackpad as good as the macbook i might as well use a touch screen once in a while when required now there's much more in there there's like more ports means lesser adapters that i have to carry plus an integrated sd card reader a dedicated gpu after years a spill resistant keyboard and quick charging Now this isn't my first ThinkPad. I have been using one at work since over 3 years now and to sound very kind I simply hate it. It's a T480 with a high capacity battery that bulges out from the bottom of the keyboard. It doesn't sit right 
and though it's a 14 inch laptop which is my most favorite size for a portable computer it's way different than my x1 extreme it's too much chassis flex cheap plastic exterior noisy fan and these are only a few things that i hate about it i've used dell latitudes that costed much lesser than this one and they were my favorite back at my previous job now i had a few fears uh, from the switch most of them are gone after using a device as well designed as the macbook pro since over four years almost four years i knew i'd certainly lose a few things for sure however now it had a high resolution 16 is to 10 ips panel right now choosing the 4k oled on the thinkpad really helped as a new screen looks awesome with more than sufficient brightness very vibrant colors on the higher than required resolution i'm not sure if i still need 4k on my laptop but it's there and then there are the speakers yes speakers on the thinkpad are not supposed to be even remotely as good as the macbook but leaving out all the detailed technical evaluation i found them to be almost 90 percent as loud and almost 80 to 85 percent as rich in terms of fidelity which i guess works for me the experience defining glass trackpad which was a force touch trackpad i can't be more delighted to say that the trackpad on the thinkpad is almost exactly as good as if not better than the macbook i really didn't need a better trackpad and if i find something almost as good it just works for me then the overall solid build of the device and this was not short of a surprise when i learned that the device is so well built it, it feels so solid more than any other laptop that i've used in the last decade and definitely way better than my t480 at work right from the first time i unboxed it i realized that but there are a few other major changes as well like though the screen is huge as compared to the old one i still feel that moving around with a smaller machine was way easier than moving with a 15 inch laptop the laptop does not open with a single hand the lid is way tighter than the ones that we see on the macbooks and opening it is a little bit of struggle finally the machine breathes from the vents underneath the body so keeping it on my lap while working doesn't appear to be the best way to use it i feel concerned every time i use it on my lap that was never the case with the macbook it had no fans on the bottom they were all hidden so was it a good decision to leave the apple ecosystem and downgrade to a thinkpad i don't know but what i do know it will be full of adventures for sure besides i've decided to not remove the compatibility for mac os from my dot files who knows what the future has in store for me also i have a small unused windows partition at the far end of my hard drive just like the old times in the end i had to pay for the license so why not keep it so that's all that i have for this video there's a lot more to come in the next videos where i'll review the machine and cover much more details about my setup unsurprisingly it was full of adventure and that's all that i can say now without giving a lot of details and too many spoilers so till then thanks for watching May the maker watch over you. See you in the next video.